Panic is back with my all-time favorite file transfer app, Transmit. Finally, after so many years, they've released a new version. But you say, Rick, it's just an FTP client. What's the big deal? And I would have agreed with you years ago, but with all the new things that they've added to it, like the cloud service integration and some other things like that, it's not just an FTP client. So in this video, we're gonna talk about Transmit, the new version, and why it's not just an FTP client anymore. Now, before we even talk about the product Transmit, can we just all agree that Panic knows how to do websites for their products? It's amazing. Everything they've ever done as far as their marketing on their, on their products is, is awesome. If you look at their website from Coda years ago, even just like the hover buttons for the buy now and the learn more buttons and the little pop-ups that came up, it was, it was perfect, it was beautiful. And if you look at Transmit's marketing website, it's no different. I mean, Look at the WebGL transmit truck that's on the web page. I mean, who wouldn't want to buy the product with this cool spinning truck that you can turn around and as you scroll, it moves up and down too. It even has ambient occlusion on the thing. I mean, what, what awesome attention to detail. Good job, Panic, on the marketing once again. As expected, purchasing and downloading the product is fast, seamless experience. I love how on Mac now you can get an email with a open in uh, transmit in this case, and it'll automatically uh, activate your product. That's a great little feature. I know it's small, but little things like that, as you'll see, add up at, over time uh, that make a great experience for the user. Now, after I installed it, I was immediately greeted with another one of Panic's cool animations. In the splash screen, there's some nice animations that go on. They did a good job again, once again confirming that I made a good purchase because WebGL trucks do not lie. One of the things that did stand out to me with Transmit is that Panic doesn't tell you what to do next. You open the app and it's just so intuitive and obvious what to do that they don't need to tell you what to do next. In fact, it's so easy that a WebGL truck driver could do it. It's very easy. I'm serious. It's so apparent what to do that if they tried to add little tutorial pop-ups and uh, what to do next kind of things, it would just get in the way. So once again, good job Panic on the design and experience. So let's talk features, and I want to level set something with you. Going from version 4 to version 5 is incremental. There are some new features, but it's not like going from a Model T to the Lunar Rover. It's more like going from an older faded yellow icon of a truck to a really cool WebGL truck. The cloud integrations, they're interesting. You know, at first I thought, when I saw the Dropbox integration, well, why do I need Dropbox? I already have Dropbox on my Mac. Why would I want to connect to it from Transmit? That doesn't make any sense to me. I came across two scenarios, though, where it is very useful. And in fact, it's not just for Dropbox, but also for OneDrive and Google Drive and those other cloud services. Number one, not all folders in my Dropbox account are on my local machine. And that's because I have a lot of things that people have shared with me or that I've created that I don't want on my local machine. And it's kind of annoying to go into Dropbox's web app to manage those things. That's what Transmit is perfect at. You can manage uh, those remote folders uh, in the Transmit interface, which is great. And number two is moving things from my remote Dropbox instance, so it's a folder that just is on my remote Dropbox instance, to somewhere like Google Drive or to an FTP server or some server in DigitalOcean is really easy because it uses the remote to remote sync that Transmit has. So I can just pick a remote folder and drag it over to my FTP server over here and it'll send it over there without having to deal with anything like syncing my folder from Dropbox locally and then pushing it up, that kind of thing. So it works great. If you have a new MacBook Pro with the touch bar, then there are a few utilitarian type things that are on the touch bar. So they did add touch bar support. Uh, you can create new files, create new folders, things like that. To be honest, I never used it once though, but that's not so much an issue with Transmit's implementation of the touch bar as it is sometimes the touch bar just doesn't add a lot of value to the user. Panic Sync is supported here, like it is on Coda and Transmit for iOS, so it's a nice addition to keep everything in sync, though I still think it's debatable if users should use it or not. Now, don't get me wrong, Panic has done a good job documenting 
why it's secure, the steps they went through to secure it. They actually had another company audit their security to make sure it's fine. So it's very good that they did that. You can actually go to panic.com forward slash sync to read more about that. But I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to send your keys and your secrets and your FTP passwords and your server username and passwords to a third party. There's strong integrations with some of the cloud services like AWS's S3. I was able to quickly create buckets, even select the regions. I could decide if I wanted it in Virginia or some other AWS instance somewhere else. So that was really nice. And while I could do things like set the encryption level for a bucket, I couldn't do things like fine-grained permission controls that you get from AWS uh, in their website, some of the XML type things. You still can apply some permissions to buckets and files, but it's not as fine-grained controlled as you would maybe be used to using S3. That would be a nice addition I'd, I'd hope to see in the future sometime. There are a lot of small things that make Transmit nice. For instance, you can bookmark a remote folder. You can select a folder or file, drag it up to the top. It saves it as a bookmark. When you double click on it later on, it'll connect to the server. If you're not connected, it'll CD into that, which makes it a nice experience. New windows can be set to auto connect to a certain server with a certain username. That's another nice touch. Even using transmit to just browse your local file system is pretty much as good as Finder is. And on that note, one of the things that I really like about Transmit is that it feels like a Mac app. A lot of these type of file transfer and FTP clients, they don't feel like a Mac app. They're from you know, it's some kind of Eclipse thing or some cross-platform Java app that never feels like it belongs. Well, Transmit feels like it belongs because it's a Panic a product. Everything Panic does feels like it is a Mac app. Max quick look, you know, when you hit the space bar on a file and it pops up a preview, it actually works on remote files. So you can go to some server you have somewhere and if you have some file up there like a JavaScript file or whatever, you can select it, hit space bar and it'll do the preview for you, which is great. I couldn't get it to work on some things like Google Drive. For some reason, it wouldn't work on some CSVs that I had, but for the most part, it worked great. Transmit automatically uses the SSH keys from your user home directory, which is a nice little thing. I know it's small, but it's just nice that they do that so you don't have to think about it. And you can also add your own keys later, and you can also generate SSH keys right from their interface as well, which is great. Quickly, let's talk pricing. Pricing's reasonable, $45. Now, there's no upgrade path for users that uh, are using Transmit 4 to Transmit 5, but it's not surprising considering the last time they've charged for Transmit was in 2010. So if you bought Transmit 4 way back in the day like I have, after seven years, I think it's a worthy upgrade. Now, as you can tell, I really do like this product. I've always liked Panic stuff, and I do like this a lot. It's my favorite FTP slash file transfer client out there. And though not a lot of my current work requires this type of file transfer, or the type of transmit workflow that they kind of assume you're doing. Maybe if they added Git, that would make it a lot easier. Uh, but when I do have those needs, and I do have them every once in a while, transmit fits the need perfectly. For the more hardcore of us that might say, oh, I don't need that. I've got SCP and RSync on my command line. I don't need that. I get it. I get it. But just remember that there's no really cool WebGL truck in the console. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and comment below what you think about Transmit.